Live, it's the Bison Football Show. Valley News Live and Gate City Bank present the Bison Football Show with head coach Chris Kleiman. Hey, I maintain as a defensive coordinator, there's nothing more discouraging for the whole opponent, offense, defense, and special teams, if you can't get out back on the field because they're, they're beating you up physically. And that's what happened in the second half. No doubt, North Dakota State used a bruising second-half performance to keep the Dakota marker in Fargo this weekend. South Dakota State gave the Bison their best shot, but like every other week, NDSU won't let an opponent do it for four quarters. We welcome to the set head coach Chris Kleiman. And coach, let's talk about that a little bit, how every week you get everyone's best shot, but you're able to adapt throughout the game. Talk about how hard that is, though, every week to face everyone's best. Oh, it is difficult, and I credit our seniors and our upperclassmen for kind of stay in the course and making sure that everybody stays focused throughout the week because we're going to have adversity in every football game. And we talk about having the adversity in every game. But uh, uh, halftime, we make the adjustments and our guys don't panic and they go out and play an exceptional second half again. This Dakota marker is important to the players, isn't it? Boy, it sure is. Uh, it, they, this group didn't want to be the group that gave <laughs> it up. And, uh, you know, so they'll turn that over to the next group of guys. But uh, our seniors were really determined to get this victory. Okay, South Dakota State, let's break down this first half. It's always a big game. There was a great atmosphere again. Now, South Dakota State won the toss, and they decided to take the ball. A very interesting decision right there, and they get a nice run early. Yes, they did. Zenner's a great running back, and they, they popped a big run on us, and good job pursuing to the football. He has not had a lot of success against the Bison. Didn't have much, but maybe more than in past years. But Kyle Emanuel early set the tone, didn't he? Uh, he set the tone. They just couldn't block him off the edge. And, and Kyle made, came up with play after play. So even though they got a few yards early, you forced a punt. Now some adversity as Carson Wentz is intercepted on this play. I thought their, their player made a great play here. And we just couldn't win the field position battle early in that first quarter. But again, Kyle rose to the occasion. Kyle Emanuel against that tackle. That tackle really had no shot. Watch this play again. Yeah, he does a great job beating him off the edge and coming around and making the sack on Sumner, who did play. You know, so after the interception, uh, you held him to a field goal. I thought that was big here. I thought that was really important to only give up three points. They had a lot of momentum, and to only get three out of that, uh, I think it gave our guys a lift. So they were doing a short kickoff on purpose, I think, to the up man, and DeLuca had a nice little return well, here. Well, I'm glad they kicked it to Nick DeLuca. Everybody can see his speed here. Uh, what a great return and, and sets us up in great field position. Some kind of athlete right there. Now, some things to come here. Carson Wentz running the football eight yards here, and he did it most of the afternoon. Well, he sure did. When things broke down, he was able to use his legs to make some plays, and uh, he carried the ball close to 15, 20 times for us. Now this set up a field goal attempt. It's a 42-yarder, and this is a miss right here. Yeah, Adam said he just pulled it. Uh, and, and one thing about Adam is he's not going to panic. He said, hey, I'm okay. I just pulled it, Coach. And we know he's a consistent guy. So a third and 12 for South Dakota State here. They only get five. Trey Dempsey, a nice play. Yeah, and makes a good play on the crossing route. Good open field tackle to prevent the first down. The running game was uh, hit and miss in the first half, but here's a nice run right here by Crockett, 16 yards. Great job blocking out front. We get the, uh, the edge cut down, and John makes a good play. South Dakota State was flying around on defense, though. We'll tip our cap to them. It's a third and four, a bubble to R.J. Erzendowski, and uh, forces a punt. Yeah, they caught us in the blitz, and they did a good job making the tackle, and they're playing really well on defense right now. We're in the second quarter already now. Kyle Emanuel, third sack already in this game. Yeah, he comes underneath this time and uh, is able to get the sack on Sunday. Gets us off the field again. Now, Kevin Bodland, uh, he's been fighting injuries a little bit. He's coming back now, makes a nice play up the sideline here for 33 yards. Yeah, uh, great call and, and great execution, getting it to Kevin quickly in the flat, and then Kevin turns it up, and you can see his speed, and we're happy that he's uh, getting healthier as the season progresses. Now, you get three points out of this. It's a 33-yard field goal, so it's 3-3 right now, starting to get into the flow of the game, and this is an important three right here. This really is, and it was good for Adam's confidence, and he splits the uprights and gets us back tied. You know, the defense was playing so well in the first half. You get him off the field again real quick. Now you involve Darius Anderson a little bit in the swing pass. Yeah, and Darius is doing a great job, kind of moving back and forth between wide receiver and tailback. Carson Wentz uh, just ran the football really well. 100 yards on the day, 10 more yards here. 
you know, we had some things that we thought we could do with Carson running the football that uh, other teams had exploited against South Dakota State, and Carson sure does it uh, yesterday. You know, a lot of uh, credit to Adam Keller, too. He missed that first one. Sometimes that can get in the head of a kicker. This is a 45-yarder. Great kick. Yeah, and all the kicks that Adam had yesterday were of 40-plus distance, I believe, and, and what a great job of getting us back on top. So it's 6-3, you're going to half here, but suddenly a little lightning bolt from South Dakota State. They get a 34-yard run, then they hit the home run. Yeah, and we just missed a tackle there. Great job. This might have been Kyle's best play. He ran him down from behind and prevented uh, a touchdown. This Jake Weineke is a freshman receiver. He did get hurt in the second half, but he's a nice young talent, and he gets a touchdown right here. Yeah, great throw by, by Sumner, and it's a 50-50 ball, and their guy goes up and gets it, and they take a lead going into half. It's the first deficit of the season at halftime for the Bison 10-6. You see it right there, NDSU, one of six on third down. Zinner did have 75 yards in the first half, but all the Kyle Emanuel sacks brought that total yardage down uh, quick for the rushing of South Dakota State. NDSU, meanwhile, rushed for 109 yards. Before we get to the second half, on the Gate City Bank hot seat, it's Colton Hegel. Tell us your hometown and the best thing about it, Colton. From Appleton, Wisconsin, uh, I would say the best thing is Monin's Breakfast. It's in a little small mom and pop breakfast shop. Nice. Who's the loudest member on the team? Has to be John Crockett by far. Yeah, I'd say so as well. <laughs> yeah. Favorite way to relax at practice without getting caught? I hang out with the quarterbacks because they don't do anything. <laughs> would you rather have it 100 degrees or 10 below zero? Oh, that's, uh, I'd probably say 10 below zero. You can always put layers on. Favorite kind of music? Uh, I'd have to go with country. Me too. What annoys you most about another person? What's your pet peeve? When Mike Hardy does hair flips with his hair, it's not that good. <laughs> what is the worst part of your personality? I'd say my honesty. Sometimes I'm a little too honest with people sometimes. <laughs> what do you like most about Coach Kleiman? Uh, I think he's a good players coach. He, you know, he takes input from everybody. Uh, basically, you cut at that. <laughs> Describe the feeling during the tunnel walk at the Dome. Oh, uh, you have goosebumps. You're just ready to itch out to go get out there. All right, Coach, your first deficit of the year at half. I'm guessing it was a pretty active locker room. Lots of adjustments needed to be made. Yeah, we needed to make a lot of adjustments. We needed to uh, be able to rush the football. That was the thing that uh, we talked about at half is we needed to come out in the second half and establish our rushing game and be able to run the football. And then defensively, we had to create some turnovers so we could get our offense some short fields. How big of an opportunity was it uh, that they won the coin toss, took the ball, then you get the ball to start the second half? That was big to have the ball coming out of the half. Boy, it sure, it sure was because we were able to create some momentum. Yeah. And we needed to get into a rhythm offensively, and I thought we did that in this first drive. Yeah, I think I would have deferred uh, if I'd have won the toss for sure. Let's start the third quarter here, take a look at this. And Coach said it wanted to start running the football, and Jock, John Crockett came out and was doing just that on a couple of runs right out of the gate here. Yeah, great job blocking, and, and we're able to push pile. This, I think, was a third and short that we were able to convert. Now, John Crockett, 34 yards. He gets out on the edge here, and, uh, well, look at the hole here. Wow. Yeah, I, great call by Coach Palasek. We were able to... We wanted to be able to get some perimeter run game going, and we were able to do that. Now get inside the red zone here. Beautiful fake by Wentz. He sells it. Easy touchdown. Yeah, this is another great call by Coach Palasek. They designed this, and uh, we'd been able to run the football quite a bit, so then we'd run the, the bootleg, and Kevin's wide open. So it's 13-10. The Bison take it right out of half. A statement drive to get on the board there, take the lead. They do come back. They have a nice wide receiver, big kid, Jason Schneider. Schneider, I think, was an all-conference performer last year at 70-plus catches, and, and you see Jordan fall down, and Schneider makes a good play. Now they have a fourth and one. This was a big point in the game right here. You stop them on this fourth and one. They decide to throw the football here. Yeah, we, we bring the house and blitz, and uh, they throw it to CJ's side, and that doesn't have a lot of success when, you, um, when CJ's playing really well. That's for sure. Zach Brott looked quiet. Uh, they did a nice job with him, but he makes a great catch right here. Yeah, this is a, a great catch. Carson puts it in the only spot that can be thrown, and, and Zach comes down with it. Now the Bison have a fourth and one coming out of a timeout. You sneak the football, certainly not throwing it here. Carson's such a big kid. He really is, and we thought that we were able to be able to push the pile and, and keep the drive alive, and we were able to do that. Now South Dakota State's on their heels a little bit, and uh, Wentz has a 22-yard run here. It just really opens up for him. Yeah, great job of protecting by the offensive line, and then uh, Carson's able to find the gap and, and run for a big game. Now Carson inside the red zone, keeps it himself. It's a five-yard touchdown. Now you have a two-possession game here. Yeah, this was a... A critical drive for us to get up two scores and Carson runs through the defender here for a touchdown. Well, credit South Dakota State, though, as we move forward, they did not back down. They answered. Now, Austin Sumner 
He hasn't played much this year. He was hurt, but he played well in this game. I thought he did. For a guy that hadn't played since August 30th, he came out and uh, threw the ball exceptionally well. Now their backup running back, Zinner, sits out a play. He comes in. Nice run down inside the five here as does it gives him a nice pop at the end. Yeah, they do a good job blocking it here, and Christian makes a great tackle, but they're inside of our five. Zinner finishes it off. It's a touchdown, so they did answer the bell here. It's 20 to 17 still. Yeah, they did, and now we're back down to a one-score game, and, and uh, they have the momentum. We've got to be able to take it back. You know, the run blocking was really good by the offensive line, but also protection for Carson was really good, especially on a play like this here. Yeah, it was exceptional. The protection was great. What a great catch here by Lucas. He's really playing at a high level right now. How many of the runs were called runs for Wentz, and how many were decisions by Carson? Probably about half and half? I would say probably half and half. This is a great job of coming out the back door and then utilizing his speed. He runs really fast. Yes, he does. And John finished it off. John was really motivated coming out of the half, ran hard. This is a five-yard touchdown, 27-17 yeah. now. Great job blocking by the by the Rams up front and the, the tackles. You see Kevin and Andrew Bonnet there leading them into the end zone. John gives the crowd a wave there, and uh, they loved every minute of that. Now a takeaway. Those are always big in a game. We needed to get a few of these in the second half, and uh, Higgs uh, is on the spot and makes the interception and sets us up uh, in great field position. And even though you had to settle for a field goal here, a long field goal, another great kick by Keller. This really makes it to where two touchdowns it would take to beat you. Correct. And a big 45-yard field goal by Adam. I'm really pleased with the way he bounced back after his first miss. You know, they'd been double-teaming Kyle since that hot start. Uh, so in the fourth quarter here, he'd been quiet for a little bit, but he got to him here, forced a fumble. Forced a fumble, and then uh, Carlton's right there for the big recovery. Well, Crockett then takes the, the takeaway there, and he will put the dagger in him right now with the touchdown, 37-17 at this point. Yeah, and we're rushing the football, and that was something that we wanted to do in the second half, and we were able to do it. And the Bison get that Dakota marker, 37-17, creating some late separation there. Look at Emmanuel's numbers, just so impressive. Wentz, he got the job done. Look, he rushed for 100, threw for over 100. And LeCompte, boy, we didn't talk about him too much, but he did a really nice job punting the football and kicking it off. Great job on the special teams. Let's hear what the players had to say after the game. You don't realize how much this means to seniors, and it's a huge win. First of all, to get us that much closer to Missouri Valley, and then to get the marker back our senior year is huge. Well, we always say the first drive of the second half is the biggest drive of the game. And um, to come out there and uh, go right down and score, uh, that was huge and that was critical, and it gave our defense a lot of momentum as well. People don't know about this, but he can really run really well, and uh, that's not, not too good. But, uh, you know, and that's something that we were, we were and it was in the game plan. You know, we were going to do some different things because they know us so well, but they've been playing us the same type of style for, what well, I don't know how many years that we've been playing each other, so it was good to have the elements of the game. I ended up running the ball a, a little bit more there, and that was something that we knew um, we could exploit there after that first half. So, and you know, we just, we got an attitude about us there. Uh, the second half, we really just started to grind it, grind it out and wear them down. And um, it was really good to see, really good finish by our guys. It's just a mindset, and it's been the formula here for the last five years since I've been here is just not being complacent. You can always get better at something. I'm sure it didn't play a perfect game today. So going out through the week, we prepare like champions. Great comments by the players, as always. Time for our Nodak Mutual Insurance Player of the Game. Kyle Manuel had an individual performance for the ages. Four sacks, four and a half tackles for loss, a forced fumble, seven solo tackles, 10 total tackles, constantly facing double teams. You get the picture. He dominated. Kyle Emanuel has put himself in position to be called the best defensive player in the nation. It's hard to describe. You know, I was telling the guys at halftime, you know, when we're down four, you know, these are, these are the ones you remember, you know, close games uh, against your rival. And, uh, you know, for, I'm just ecstatic, like I said, for these seniors, um, for these guys, keep this rock in Fargo, um, and uh, we'll try and keep this going against Northern Iowa. I think a fair statement, Coach. Uh, he has put himself in the discussion as the best player in the nation defensively, hasn't he? Yeah, he sure has. And, and as Kyle points out a lot, gives credit to his teammates yeah. and his coaches. And that's what you notice with all those seniors and, and Carson as well as the juniors. They have each other's back, and they, they generally do love each other, and they love to get out there and play together. 
I wanted to talk about fourth down. I thought it was huge in this game. So they have a fourth and one, don't get it. The Bison have a fourth and one, get it. I think it was a key point in the game. So it can be a momentum switcher. Mm -hmm. What is your philosophy on fourth down? When do you go for it? When do you don't? Well, it's kind of a feel, but those are turnovers. You know, when, yeah. when they don't get it, it's, it's a turnover. And when, when we can get it, it uh, keeps our offense on the field. And, and time of possession is so critical for our football team. And I think we almost doubled them up again. And, and that can just wear down a defense. How about play selection on fourth and one? The Bison have had six fourth and ones this year, sneaked it four times, ran it twice. What's your philosophy there? Carson's big. We've got a great <laughs> offensive line, and uh, we should be able to push the pile, and, and he should be able to get a yard. Now, turnover margin, I wanted to talk about that as well. Uh, you're a plus seven. That's really solid. Top ten in the nation. Northern Iowa also a, a plus seven. We'll talk about that. But 15 takeaways. You've only turned it over eight times. Pretty good formula, really. Yeah, it really is. And that's the way you have success. Is you don't beat yourself with turnovers. And you've got to be able to create a few of them on, on defense as well as on special teams. And so if you're in that plus category, you're usually having a pretty good season. Again, this week's opponent, Northern Iowa, is also a plus seven. Tied in that category could be a key stat in a what potentially could be a close ball game. Now, third down defense also, I think, is a, a big stat. Let's look at the top teams in the nation as far as third down defense. Uh, some of the more important teams there, contenders, you see Villanova, uh, Northern Iowa's seventh, NDSU is fifth, but 26.6% third down defense. That's a pretty good number, isn't it? That's a great number, and, and you get that by having success on first and second down. If you notice, even in the second half of our game, our offense was in third and one, two, and three, as opposed to third and five plus. And uh, for our defense, when we get into those third and medium to long yard situations, um, we expect to get off the field. Jacksonville State, you saw on that list, too. Look out for them. They're a team to watch. They've only lost their FBS game. They only lost to Michigan State so far. They're 8-1 on the season, certainly, so that stat does play out. Teams that are good in that stat are playing well on the football field. Coming up in the Olaf Anderson Construction feature story, Adam Keller. We're going to talk about how important these special teams are. Welcome back to the show. It's easy to take the kicking game for granted, but the Bison have needed Adam Keller this year, and he has delivered. Five field goals against Montana, has only missed four total field goals all year, has yet to miss an extra point, knock on wood, and it's not by accident. In this week's Olaf Anderson Construction feature story, we find Keller works hard at his craft. It might be the most overlooked play in football something that fans might not take very seriously. This one is up, and it is good. But it can just as easily decide a game. The extra point. I don't take any offense to it, but I think I think a lot of people do take it for granted. I mean, that's the time when everyone's like, all right, maybe I'll go grab a popcorn or something. Adam Keller treats every kick the same. You know, every point's a critical point. Whether it be a 50-yard field goal or a PAT that puts his team up 30 points, the routine never changes. I line up, I'll uh, put my instep right in line with where Ben would put the, put the ball. I, I tap Ben on the shoulder and then take my one, two, three steps back. I'll line it up and then uh, take two steps over, look up at the field goal post again, look down at Ben, and, uh, and I, I kind of have like a swing kind of thing. I don't know where this came, came about, but the guys make fun of me. And then I'll, I'll give Ben a head nod, and then just. Heading into Saturday's game with SDSU, the senior from Pennsylvania had made all 29 of his extra points and has converted 88 straight, the sixth longest streak in league history. And for the most part, he's a self-taught man. Not a whole lot of people know what all goes into kicking, so there's not somebody out here that's going to tell me, do this, do that. You know, it's, it's me out here that has, to, that has to do the right things, do the checklist every time, and not, not ever take a, a playoff. You know, I think that because the expectation is to make this kick, it's, it's you know, it's, everybody thinks it's gonna, going through when you line up for it. So, you know, if something does go wrong, everybody's like, well, what the heck happened? So, I mean, I think that there is a lot of pressure on an extra point just, you know, because everybody expects you to make that kick. Bison fans don't have to worry about number 17. Hey! He's money. For the Bison Football Show, I'm Jamal Spencer.
Coach, obviously Keller made all of his extra points this weekend. He's having a great year, and I think that's something that uh, is taken for granted sometimes is, uh, you know, kickers have to be self-motivated. They have to want to do well. It's easy for kickers to go through the motions at practice, but he doesn't do that. He doesn't. He works hard at his craft. All of our kickers do, and mm -hmm. as well as our long snappers. I, I've so enjoyed being around those guys this year. With me not coaching on the defensive side, I've spent more time hanging out with those guys, and yeah. I've really enjoyed Adam, and, and he's kicking with tremendous amount of confidence right now. And in tough road games, which this week could be at Northern Iowa, a good kicker could be a big weapon. They have a good kicker as well. Oh, yeah, and it's going to be a great you know, environment to be able to yeah. kick, and so yeah. I know Adam's looking forward to it. Well, in this week's Peterson Farm Seed Future Crop of Bison, NDSU plucked another kid from Sioux Falls last year. Dan Marlett was a highly recruited player out of Sioux Falls, Washington. He is redshirting as a linebacker this year. He was a two-time All-Stater in South Dakota. He is watching his good buddy and emerging star Nick DeLuca right now for motivation. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a little inspiring, you know. Uh, I sit next to Nick uh, DeLuca in the locker room, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I talk to him a lot, and uh, he's a good kid. And, you know, just the fact that everyone has an opportunity, and it's, it's achievable as long as you just apply yourself. Coach, talk about Dan. A lot of teams really wanted this kid. He mm -hmm. had a great high school career, played for a powerhouse high school program in Sioux Falls, Washington. What, what does he bring to the table? We really liked him at camp. He was a physical guy, really good athlete. You can tell how much stronger uh, he's gotten. You can look at him and see his body developing uh, with Coach Kramer's program. But uh, I was really happy for Dan as well as all of our uh, South Dakota guys to be yeah. able to, to win the marker game. And uh, uh, Dan will be heard from here uh, next year. Good young talent at linebacker Marlette and Jordheim from Dickinson. Uh, it's going to be a position of need, so it's good to see that. Coming up, Northern Iowa. It's going to be a battle. It's a huge game in the Valley. We'll set the stage for you. Stay with us. Well, it's on this week. Northern Iowa, Saturday, 4 o'clock in Cedar Falls at the Unidome. It's the Bison and the Panthers. Always a big game. Uh, last year it came down to the wire. Sam O'Jury had to run one in uh, late. Uh, you and I had a lead, 23-10 in the fourth quarter here at the Fargo Dome. And you remember this run, Coach. Uh, Sam O'Jury, it was big. That gave the Bison the 24-23 win. Talk about this year's game. It's going to be a big one. They're still alive in the playoff hunt. Oh, absolutely. It'll be a great uh, matchup. And both teams uh, are playing really well right now. It'll come down to... Who makes the fewest mistakes? Yep. Uh, you can't turn the ball over, and you've got to be able to make some explosive plays. But uh, I know their guys will be ready, and our guys are looking forward to the challenge. Good luck, Coach. It's a huge week. We're going to recap it uh, next week for you, and we'll see you next time. We'll see you down at UNI.